this lesson, we're going to get you started in what's called melodic style banjo playing, which is a really great technique for playing runs of notes that are scalar in nature, in particular fiddle tunes, melodic style licks, um, all sorts of good stuff where you don't necessarily want to have that Scrug style roll based application <clears throat> or the choppy single string approach as well. So basically, we're going to get you playing the scales of melodic style and then some applications how to use them in licks and how to use them to play fiddle tunes and get you launched on the melodic style highway. Let's get started. First of all, anytime you do a lesson involving scales, it has to be acknowledged that there's a lot of scales out there. There's more scales than on a thousand pound tuna fish. Um, and that includes everything from major to minor to modal scales to pentatonic scales to hybrid scales to uh, synthetic scales, diminished, chromatic, augmented. It goes on and on and on. Even scales that have notes over the eight steps of the octave, as in a lot of Middle Eastern scales and whatnot. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on the good old major scale. And the reason why is if you learn your melodic scales based on the major structure, like a G major, later on you can always take out notes to make it a pentatonic, add notes to turn it into a blues or mixolydian, or add even more notes to make it chromatic. And also it'll give you the structure to understand all the melodies that are based on that major scale. Whether it's, you know, uh, Joy to the World, or something more complicated, uh, like Fly to the Bumblebee. In any case, um, we have other lessons that involve the uh, bluegrass scale, the pentatonic scales, and all that stuff that's very useful for improvising. In this lesson, we're going to cover the major scales for the melodic style banjo. A brief little disclaimer here. When you learn scales, remember that the process is to learn them so you can then break the rules. So, ultimately, you want to be using your scales to create improvisation in music. So when you go to a jam and you're playing something in G, you want to launch onto your melodic style scales. You want to make it more angular, less predictable, uh, and basically what we call noodle with that scale, as opposed to having your solo come up and you do this. way to drive off friends and loved ones. So that's not really the subject of this lesson. That's other lessons as well as work with us over the, um, the video lessons and the Skype stuff to get to improvise with your scales. That's a whole other art. But we just want to let you know, once you learn the scales, if you want to use them in an improvisatory sense, you'll want to be noodling with the scales. And what that means is the following tricks. First, you always play along with something. In this case, a backing track would be great, something that provides you with the rhythm and the chords to have context to play your scales as licks and phrases. Then you want to be adding rests, of course, so it doesn't sound like you're just reciting scales. And then, of course, you're always thinking in terms of longer and shorter notes, repeating notes to create riffs, and, of course, skipping strings to make it sound like you're not just ascending and descending. Once again, that's a subject for improvisation lessons. Um, get a hold of us for that and we'll jam with you for hours on end. But for the meantime, let's move forward to learning our melodic style scales. What's very important at the onset is learn the principle of the melodic style, which has also been called cross string playing or alternate string playing, because what we're doing is we're bouncing back and forth from adjacent strings to avoid having to repeat strings in a row. That gives us more of a legato fluid approach and allows us to build a lot of speed into our scales without doubling up with the fingering. For example, in our melodic style principles, you can see in the graph that if we had a scale that started on the G string and went up to an A, second fret at the G string, and then it went up to a B note, which is conveniently fourth fret G string, if you were playing in a more linear based, you could say guitaristic fashion, you would play that beginning of a scale, that Do, Re, Mi, like this. Which makes perfect sense for, you know, a lot of instruments, and even the banjo. And in fact, you could play the scale in the single string style, like this. And playing it like a lot of notes on each string. Now, in the melodic style, we've decided that we never want to double up if we can help it. So, for example, after we pick that open G string, 
instead of finding the A note on that same string, we look elsewhere. In this case, it's available over here on the D string at the seventh fret. Very convenient. So now, instead of this, open G, G second fret, we have open G, D string seventh fret. Listen to the difference. Here's the first version. Sounds like guitar. Now we have this, where we're bouncing back and forth to get those same two notes. Way slicker. Way slicker. So, all of a sudden you can see if you had a phrase that went G, A, B. Instead we're going to go G, find the A over here, and then move over to the open B string. We've never had to double a string in doing that. So instead of this, you have this. As you can tell, it gives you that more flowing sound that's typical of the melodic style in banjo playing. Your little movement with the left hand and lots of fluidity with the right hand because we can just play roll-esque patterns and never have to double up on a string. And therein lies the principle of the melodic style. When you hear those phrases, they're not all on one string. Instead of this, we would do this. Instead of this, we would do this. So to get used to this, let's go over some basic melodic style drills. And what's going to happen with this drill number one is we're going to plant our pinky. If you're feeling sissy today, you can use your ring finger. That's fine. Technically, you want to be using the pinky for that seventh fret note on the D string. We're going to plant that, and then as you can see, we're going to roll back and forth between several other open strings and that seventh fret on the D string. So, basic drill number one sounds like this. G, pick this the D string. B, back to the D string, and then back to the G. So it's an ascension and descension on a basic first beginning of the scale. It's a great melodic style warm-up. Let's practice that together nice and moderately after the count of two. One, two. practice drill number two and now we bring in the next melodic style note where the C note that is usually found on the second string at the first fret is now in the melodic style found on the fifth fret at the G string and the reason is we can now bounce back and forth between those two notes the open B string and that C note on the G string at the fifth fret therein lies the E equals MC2 of the melodic style, the crux of this approach is having that alternation from string to string. So drill number two, we're going to climb up, basically up to that C note and then back down. It's going to sound like this. And you'll notice we can keep that pinky planted at the seventh fret on the D string, but the middle finger over here on that C note on the G string at the fifth fret has to be lifting off and on. A little bit of work there. Okay? Again, it'll sound like this. Notice when this comes off and on. Beautiful. Let's play that together after the count of two. One, two. continue on up and land on that D string and then go back down. So we have approximately half of the G scale. It sounds like this. And now is the first time you start to really hear the power of the melodic style approach come out, where we have the full half of a scale, 
but we're hardly moving with the left hand at all and playing really comfortable roles with the right hand and we get those really fluid sounding scales. Really, really cool. And then we can start using those into our playing. Real soon, you're going to start fitting these phrases into your Scruggs picking through melodic style licks. You could even use that scale fragment and drill number three, for example, if you're picking around in some uh, G Scruggs picking. It fits in very seamlessly. The more of that, the better. Okay, let's play the melodic style drill number three after the count of two. One, two. Again, notice how that pinky finger is anchored and the middle finger is lifting off and on. Let's look at the timing of that lift again. On, 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 off. Right? Very important. Alrighty, well, why stop there? Let's go ahead and learn the complete G major melodic style scale, which is the biggest cliche in all of melodic style playing. Whether you're playing Turkey in the Straw or Blackberry Blossom, we're going to be using a very familiar position that will be coming up again and again and again. And it's sort of like an extended chord shape. Let's look at that. So basically, what's going to be happening is you play the full scale in G, is over the course of that scale, the pinky will be landing here on the fourth string of the seventh fret. Then, as we already have done, middle finger will be hopping over here on the 5th fret on the G string, and then the ring finger will be sneaking in eventually for that E note on the 2nd string at the 5th fret, and then our pointer finger will be hitting the D string, the 1st string, at the 4th fret. So the sequence will be like this, here, 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 here. And you'll see how that works when I play the full scale. Watch how we go through that sequence with the left hand. So opposite back down. Right? Very important to get that sequence flow with your left hand. The right hand is playing some indiscriminate blurry roll patterns, but the left hand has a very specific position. We're never going to have it all down at once, so it's not a chord, so don't worry about that. That'd be in A minor 6 or something unnecessary like that. But basically, over the course of that scale, we will be falling into that shape. That's why we put that shape up on the screen for you so we can look at that. Let's take a peek at that shape. So as you can see from the deck diagram, our fourth finger, hence the number 4, will be hitting that fourth string at the seventh fret. Then very shortly thereafter, the middle finger, number two, will be at the fifth fret on the third string. And then see that number three? That's your ring finger hitting the fifth fret on the second string. And then following up finally that number one means the pointer finger is at the fourth fret on the first string. The other circles just represent the open strings, like that little circle right under the fifth string peg just means an open string, and same with the circles down by the nut there. That means you're alternating between the open strings and the numbers pressed in this diagram. All right, enough said. Let's try playing this together. So I'm going to count it off, count of two, and we're going to play it very slowly together, basically ascending and descending. Now, the difference we're going to do here is when we get to the top of the scale, we're not going to stop and pause, we're going to go right back down so it connects in an even flow. We don't double the top note. We're not doing this. We're doing this. And the reason is that way you can have a circular pattern to exercise to uh, further alienate your roommates. Um, and basically what's going to happen is it'll be a circle drill, if you will, that sounds like this. Alright, till the cows come home. Let's do that slowly after the count of two. One, two.
good. Notice we're doing what some folks call typing with the left hand. We're just getting down there when we need the note and pretty much staying on only as long as we need to be there and then getting to the next finger. We're not leaving everything down consecutively. That would be very painful and unnecessary and you're not getting paid enough to play it in that sense. So you're typing. I'll exaggerate with the left hand. Watch my left hand. Of course, I'm exaggerating there, but that's the idea. We don't have to stay put. All right, that position we learned in G, the one that sounds like this, is technically in the first position, or the first octave, basically. Um, and that continues up the neck. So we have another really handy partial scale position that starts up here with the ring finger on the 10th fret on the B string and then the pointer finger over here on the 1st string at the ninth fret. And we have this classic, some call the Blackberry Blossom phrase, that sounds like this. So we're doing basically a new scale, the higher octave, starting up. And then we're going to reach over, yes, and fret the 5th string. I know this is anathema to many of you, but stay calm, keep breathing. The idea here is we're sort of at a crossroads in technique. A lot of folks like to fret with the thumb. As you can tell, I have very, you know, Welsh pickle fingers, so that's painful for me. I fret with the middle finger on that fifth string. We're going to leave that up to you. Um, I'm sort of a fan with not fretting with the thumb, but there are many folks, including, you know, Noam Pekelny, who do use the thumb to great effect. So we're not going to say that's a bad thing to do, but in this video, we're going to be fretting with the middle finger. FYI. So that whole phrase, the upper position for the G melodic scale sounds like this. Very handy phrase. That will be used over and over again in your playing. For example, Blackberry Blossom. Which of course is available in our fiddle tune book. But basically for now, we want to think of this as being a scale starting on the fifth string. A partial scale to be exact, because it doesn't play the whole octave. We're concerned with just a partial position for now. So, basically, we're going to play that by itself and then combine it with the lower position. So we're just going to play that top half now, nice and slow, after the count of two. One, two. Now for the fun part, we're combining both positions, first and second position, for the G melodic scale. This is going to climb all the way up, essentially, from 0 to the 12th fret, so it covers a big span of the neck. We're technically playing up the neck now, so pat yourself on the back. And what this is going to look like after we play that first position, we then take, here's the key here, you take this same shape. What's very important is you notice you're not going to leave the strings. The same shape right here with the ring finger on that fifth fret and the pointer finger on that fourth fret on the bottom two strings is going to slide up one, two, three, four, five frets maintaining that shape. Very important. We're just loosening the fingers, gliding up, and then pressing back down. It's called contouring where we never leave the string. All we do is relax our grip, slide to the next position, and then press down again. And that's because after we leave this bottom shape, we're going to need to be right here with one brief fifth string in between. Not a whole lot of time to shift, okay? So we got to move rather quick. So we're going to climb up, loosen up, slide, shift, press down, play the top half, same thing in reverse, come back down, right? So when you're coming back down, remember, you're just loosening up, sliding down the strings like a trapeze artist, pressing back down, and finishing out the pattern. All right? The whole position, lower and higher octaves in G after the count of two. One, two.
since you are at Jam Along after all, we want to have you play the scale with a backing track. This is a single chord backing track in the key of G and we do provide this in the audio portion of the lesson. Remember, under the video screen on your lesson you have audio files in the media player there. You can play those to your heart's content. This is an example of how you will do that. We're going to now play our G melodic scale in both positions along with the backing track in G. This is how you get good at it, forcing yourself to play to a beat and the backing track is way less painful than a metronome, trust us. So let's try this together after the count of two. One, two. Slide your slider bar back and play it as many times as you want. Remember, in the melodic style, we don't really use this C down here a lot, like for the C chord. We like to use it up here on the third string at the fifth fret because it gives us that ability to bounce around. One, two. All right, now for the D melodic style scale, it would be like this. Thumb, pointer, thumb, pointer. And if you hold those both down, you can see we have another classic melodic style position. Two. But more importantly, let's talk about what you would use melodic style playing in in real life. Two main purposes of melodic style as far as banjo players are concerned in jamming is to work out fiddle tunes note for note and to have melodic style licks to incorporate into our scrugs and other styles of picking. One, two. 